we find that explanation has holes in it, and it, it's, <laughs> get it with the arches, the holes, so anyway. We are at uh, Zion National Park and behind me is the Great Arch and we've hiked up here to see this uh, this Great Arch. The arch is set into the into the sandstone. It's not a complete arch because there's not air that goes all the way through it but it's like an almost arch. At least it, it lets us think about um, how did this arch form like this. Well the standard uh, explanation that we read in National Park signage for example, especially when we, when we go to Arches National Park where there are actual arches, it says that over eons the sand grains were deposited and then over more eons those sand grains were cemented together and then over even more eons those sand grains were eroded away one grain at a time. We find that that explanation has holes in it and it, it's <laughs> get it with the arches, the whole, well, anyway. Uh, these arches today are crumbling at a slow pace, but um, um, just in the 90s, uh, one of the arches in Arches National Park, the bottom piece of it fell down. And what researchers discovered when they um, sorted through the debris was that it just turned into sand. So we're looking right here at, sorry, I didn't tell you I was gonna squat, but the sand that we're walking on here is from the sandstone, the, the Navajo sandstone that's around us, that's just eroded um, and fallen off. So the cementation part of the story, where the grains cement to one another, turns out to be false, and it's still on the signage. Because when the arches, um, um, when the sand uh, erodes, a chunk will fall off, and then it will just burst into to loose sand grains for the most part. Here's the critical thing is uh, there was a study in 2014 published in the um, Nature Geoscience and researchers uh, did an incredible experiment, simple, but sometimes the simple ones that uh, tell us the most. They made sand blocks, um, put pressure on the sand blocks like in a tub, and then they put water in there. And then as the water level rose and then sank, um, the sand automatically, naturally dropped and it left arches in the, in the sand formations. So you don't need pressure, you don't need uh, eons to erode sand grains, all you need is wet sand and water. Well, we're thinking in terms of Noah's flood having provided the wet sand that deposited all these layers and all these sand grains in an enormous, unimaginably catastrophic worldwide uh, water event. And then as the waters from Noah's flood sink down, just like the waters in their tub in their experiment, some of this material fell out and it left arches behind. What holds up the arch is just the architecture of the pressure of the overlying weight that pushes down and, and pins all those sand grains together. And um, so we've learned a lot about arches. And one of the things we've learned is you don't need time uh, to make arches. You just need water and sand. And uh, so, so this, is, this is one of these arches and we're thinking about Noah's flood and on to the next stop. <laughs>